We're back again. Mm-hmm. Hey, your favorite YouTuber is back with another reaction video. The usual homelessness, joblessness, people living on the breadline, cost they're living, people living in dirty homes and that. It's like four videos I'm going to be reacting to, or maybe five. I've mashed them together to make one long video. Obviously, there's breaks in between and that. But, um, yeah, I ain't seen these videos before. Obviously, what I do with most of the videos and that, I'll just watch the first 10 seconds, then I'll go into the middle. 10 seconds, I right, boom, now nah, I know this is a good enough video for me to react to, innit? So, um, yeah, let's get into it. This will be a good one, definitely. Let's go. Goal time. Robert Sellers says it's a life of constant fear for those sleeping rough on the streets of Birmingham. A few weeks back, I got stamped all over. What the by fuck? By some drunken lads. They found it funny, and then one of them come back in the morning and says, "Sorry about that, mate. It's forty pounds." I had a gash to my head, and now it's got infected. They're taking the piss blood. Did you hear that? One sec. They found it funny, and then one of them come back in the morning and says, Sorry about that, mate, it's £40. Nah, you forget gunshot for that. You forget bun for that blood. Taking a piss blood, it is £40. I mean, it's better than nothing, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? I've been, I've been rushed plenty of times. Ain't no one can give me no fucking bloody blood. You're doing better than me. Everyone's getting paid to get stamped out. Shit. It's a little wage there. I had a gash to my head, and now it's got infected. And he just thought it was all right. He'd stamped all I was bleeding and everything. He thought it was all right just to give me £40 and think it was all right. Which has caused an infection through my whole body to my legs. Nah. Yeah, in it. I'm in a bad way. Nah. They need to go to jail for that blood. Fam, who does that, fam? Who, bro, you don't trouble people that don't trouble you, fam. Yeah? And these same pussy offs, they will have someone in their life that's troubling them and they won't lay a finger. They won't even say nothing, they won't even step to them, blood. But they will pick a random guy on the street and beat him up. So I'm, I, I, I never want to be, man, don't trouble people that don't trouble me, blood. Unless you're doing something that's annoying me, obviously I'm going to have words with you, obviously. It's hard out here, it really is. I've been in and out of hostels, I've, I've been in shared houses but it's just always broken down because of relationships. Stacey Moran says her whole life fell apart over about four years. She now sleeps on the street because she lost her home. No one should have to live like this. What sort of things have happened to you? I've been woken up. I guarantee you they're going to blame the government. It, it, it's the government's fault. You know, they're not helping uh, us local people, but the, the foreigners are coming over. Watch. We'll see. One sec. Because she lost her home. No one should have to live like this. What sort of things have happened to you? I've been woken up by getting booted in the back by three drunk men. How? Why the fuck would you kick someone in their back in their sleep, you know? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. You forget dipped up for that. You forget barn for that. I've been urinated on. I wouldn't piss on someone even if they was on fire. Look, she's about to cry, you know. That's kind of sad still. I've been assaulted. I've been verbally abused. I've been rubbed. I get rubbed every single night. What is there to rob? People like that you donate to, you don't take from. There's not one night that I go to sleep where I don't wake up and something's missing. Some of, the, some of these people, it's like yours I go to, are that, like, I'll knock the door and they'll be unlocking, unlocking, unlocking. They've got about 10 deadlocks on the door and that. And then you get me, I'll go and do the job or whatever, innit? Yeah? And then when I leave, they'll be locking up, locking up, locking up. And I'm thinking, bruv, if you're afraid of people coming in, and stealing stuff, yeah? Don't worry about that, yeah? People will break into your yard and think, blah, we need to start donating some shit, yeah? Let's write down this address and forward it onto the local charity shop, yeah? Fucking hell, man. How you gonna rob a homeless person? You don't rob from them, you give to them, shit. That's how you know you hit rock bottom when you're robbing a broke person. 
Nathan Eversley says he's ex-army, but he's shocked by the things he sees here in civilian life. I was asleep and, and someone dragged me, dragged me, dragged my feet, and I, and I woke up outside by where, 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 where I sleep. And I was like, I don't know how long I've been there, but like I had a cut on my eye, and you've got to sleep with one eye open and one ear open, basically. Like you've got to be on, on edge. And do you feel on edge all the time? Yes. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's, it's like, you know, um, you, you're always walking about, you're never, t you know, you, you're constantly tired, your feet are hurt, I've got a trench foot, do you know what I mean? Right, yeah, just keep, continue walking. And, um, you know, obviously I beg and ask people for money and that, do you know what I mean? And, you, and, and the abuse I get, I mean, you know, I've been punched in the face and all sorts, mate, do you know what I mean? Right, yeah. Because that's how we're treated, we're treated like scum. Homeless people we spoke to agreed there are places to go to off the streets, but the reasons they remain here are complex and individual. Imagine, yeah, so being homeless, you'd think yeah, your biggest worries are freezing, not eating, getting rained on, getting pissed on by a fox or something, because I don't think anyone's going to let their dog piss on someone. No, nah, they got to be worried about, so not only do they worry about freezing, starving, getting rained on, getting pissed on by a fox, they got to be worried about getting robbed, stamped out, punched in the face, kicked in the back and dragged out of their sleep. Come on, man. Nah, these people forget. So, man, I don't want to promote no violence, yeah. How did you become homeless? Um, I went to prison. I was only in prison for five weeks. I was in a shared house. Um, when I got out, there was no place in the shared house for me no more. Nah, that's... Nah, 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 nah. Something, something don't add up. When you go to jail, they make sure there's somewhere for you to go to once you leave prison. Because they don't want to... You know what I'm saying? You to, if someone goes to jail and they're released and they're homeless and that, well, that's just a reason for them to start re-offending and that. So... They would, I don't give a fuck if there was no space in that house. Yeah, maybe that might be true. There was no space in that house there. But they would have found them somewhere else in the country. Some halfway house or something in it. I don't know, in it. There's somewhere that motherfucker could have been housed. Yeah, that's bullshit. His story stinks. Yeah. He probably got kicked out of the share house or whatever, in it. Because, you know, when people were in a bad position in their life, they never like to admit that it's their fault. Because then... That means that you are accepting accountability and responsibility in that. And it's down to you to fix your problem. So if people will rather say, oh, it's this, this is the reason why I'm in this position. It's someone else's fault. So they don't have to take accountability. They don't have to take responsibility for the action. And therefore, they do not have to fix their problem. That guy's story stinks, man. He done something to get kicked out of that place. I guarantee you. You, you get to a stage when you've been on, on, on the street for a long time. It's like, it's like being in prison, you get institutionalised and, and some people get in, into that way though. Oh, to them homeless, dirty like, fingernails, They find right? it hard to settle back into the community of, of living in a house. There's places, but some of the homeless are selfish and choose to keep their rooms open in hostels while sleeping out on the streets. Oh my! Right because then it, it's, not, it's not focusing on the people who are genuinely homeless that want to get in some. What? Oh, God. You can't make this shit up. A man has a room that he can sleep in, but he'd rather sleep out on the streets. People get in, into that way, dog. Them dirt, little attack like, of the dirty like finger. You get institutionalized. Boy. Hey, I beg. Hey, you, man. Hey, check your fingers right now, fam. Feel it like that. Stop watching this video. Pause it. Go wash your damn rascal up fingers. Dirty bungle. And some people get in, into that way, dog, of being homeless, dog. So they find it hard to settle back into the community of, of living in a house. There's places, but some of the homeless are selfish and choose to keep their rooms open in hostels while sleeping out on the streets. Which is not. You can't make that up. I've, you see what I'm saying? This is why I don't feel sorry for homeless people. I feel sorry for them people are going around attacking them and beating them up, yeah. But in terms of them living out on the streets, and that, that's your own fault, yeah? If I review your timeline, if I look through your past, and that, there's something in your story that don't add up, yeah? Right, because then it's not, it's not focusing on the people who are genuinely homeless that want to get in somewhere. 
Robert Sellers of Burton-upon-Trent says he was a trained electrician but ended up here after a relationship breakdown. Oh my days. <laughs> this goes against everything. Hey, JYS TV. JYS has just lost all credibility. I've said him, I don't I think I might have said it in the video the other day. Or I was watching a video that I produced a, a long time ago, but I watched it the other day. I said, you'll never find a homeless electrician. I have been disproved, yeah? Unsubscribe to my Rascal channel right now. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I can't believe it. I've always said, you'll never find a man who's an electrician who's homeless. There had to be one pussy -o to fucking disprove my theory, innit? You know, he deserved to get stamped out, man. Go ahead. He says he couldn't... Nah, I'll tell you that back, man. I, no one deserves to get beaten up for no reason, but you need a slap still. How are you a fucking qualified electrician, but you're homeless? That's how you know this guy's got a drug and or an alcohol problem. Because why would you not just get a job? You know what I'm saying, innit? There's something about him he's not able to function properly as a human being why he can't go and get a job and be an employed as an electrician, blood. Get benefits or a home because he didn't have a fixed address. I've only just started up benefits because I never had an address and I was only told yesterday that I could use someone else's address. So I've been struggling all this time. But now I've still got to wait five weeks before I get any money now. It's just that I can't, I just can't win. I'm more than frustrated. I'm suicidal some days. Right, next video, next video. So that was one out of possibly five. So I was living with my family and it was just so toxic and it was really beginning to affect my mental health. So I thought my best option would be probably just to move out and get my own space. But like I say, a lot of people are not getting on along with their parents. Now, obviously, there are some parents out there that are just tyrants and they're bad people, or whatever. Really, yeah. But the reason why it's toxic, the reason why you're not getting along with them, you're seeing them too much. Yeah? You're not busy enough. You're a young person. You should be working from 8 to 8. Yeah, if you can't work from 8 to 8, 8 to 5, come home, go to the gym. Do you know what I'm saying, innit? Yeah, you should be locked in your room. You should be working on some big plans or whatever, innit? No, you're sitting around watching TV, getting on people's nerves after work, if you're even working. Yeah? Told you already, like, when I was working at that Holborn job, I never saw my mum, blood. I'd get up at 6, 6.30 in the morning, she'd have a cup of tea waiting. Big up, mummy. Yeah? She'd have a cup of tea waiting. I'll get out of the house at about, I don't know, 7 o'clock, whatever, in it, boom. 7.30, whatever, boom. Um, yeah, I'll come back from work at 9, maybe 11 o'clock at night. I'd heat up my dinner. My mum might shout my name, you all right, or whatever, yeah. I didn't see my mum. I didn't see my mum for like, actually, no, I tell a lie. Obviously, on the weekends and nights to pick her up and that. But Monday to, to, through Friday, I never saw my mum. I never really had a conversation with my mum. Grinded. How the hell me and mum are going to have a toxic relationship if I don't even see the lady? So Sophie found the courage to leave her family home. That's good to know. I knew my blood clot self. I reached out to the council, but because of COVID, it was really hard. Some of the departments were closed. They said they weren't taking walk-ins. I did try and fill in the forms online, but then they wouldn't work. So eventually I did manage to do it, but with the help from New Horizon. Problems that young people are already facing a year ago have just been exacerbated by the pandemic and made worse. Youth unemployment has got worse. We're seeing more young people approach us with complex mental health needs. Um, we're seeing more young women, so that's pretty much doubled. Um, and more young people, I guess, coming to us um, for reasons that we saw before, so family breakdown, they've lost their job. 
domestic violence, um, but those problems have become more severe. So we have scarves, socks. We're about to head down to the Strand. There's a large homeless population down there. And we will speak to, um, speak to people serving the food and find out if there's any young people in the area. We've got our snack packs, we've got our um, phone chargers, um, hats, scarves, gloves. We get um, quite a few referrals from, um, from other homeless services. So they might phone us and say, you know, we've seen like a group of young people who come down most evenings, evenings come down and find them. We work with young people and we've built our services around what we know about young people and we continue to flex and change it. So I guess what's really needed is for that kind of model to be seen in other sectors as well. So if we're thinking about youth specific housing that's delivered by organisations that have that experience um, and where young people can feel safe and that's something that we're really keen to work towards. I'm actually doing really well now. I feel a lot more at home. I feel a lot more relaxed. I do therapy as well, so that's definitely been helping me. And I feel really optimistic about the future, if I'm honest. I think from here, things are going to get a lot better. Next video, next video. I have never seen anything like what families are going through now. I don't know how they're going to cope. I don't know how they're going to react when there's no food in the fridge. I don't know what they're going to do when their children doesn't have breakfast going to school. That is fucking ridiculous. I know a man, a man told me that because his mum didn't earn enough money or whatever, she was given one option out of two. Either your son can get free bus travel or he gets free school meals. One or the other. Can't get both. Either free bus travel or free school meals. Yeah? So you just take the, if you take the free bus travel, then you have to pay for your child's school meals. And if you, um, you take the free school meals, then you have to pay for your son's bus travel. Well, the school was very far away. So the boy the son had to take the free bus travel. His mum could not afford to give him lunch. So you know, this youth, he used to only eat breakfast and never ate throughout the whole day. And when I sat down and I thought about it, I'm like, right, my man lived in this particular area and the school was quite far away. He probably woke up about 5, 5.30 in the morning. Let's say he even ate breakfast at 6, 6.30 and that. 6.30 to 8, that's an hour and a half, yeah? 8 till 4, that's four, um, 8 till 12, that's four hours. Yeah? So we're at the five and a half hour mark. Then school finishes, because remember, you don't eat lunch. School finishes at 3 o'clock, yeah? So we're at three hours now. So we're at eight and a half hours, yeah? It'll take him two hours to get home uh, from, from 3 to 5 o'clock. It'll take him two hours to get home and that. Now we're at the two hour mark. So in total, we're at... Uh, Basically about 11 hours or something like that. A man's going basically 11 hours without eating a fucking school meal, without eating a decent meal, blood. I told my mum, she said, that boy is lying. This is someone that me and my mum know, and she said, he's lying, he's lying. I'm like, mum, I believe he's telling the truth. Imagine sending your youth to school and you know they're not going to eat throughout the entire day. Madness. Madness. She should be ashamed of herself as a parent, blood. We can very, very much say that the cost of living crisis has hit different parts of the country very, very unequally. Inflation has predominantly affected things which people with lower income spend more on, so that is things like energy and food. The increased price of basic products have made life very difficult for the lower income bracket or the lowest 20 to 40 percent of earners nationwide. This is Nick de Stackpole. He is a single dad of three and lives in housing provided by the borough of Chelsea and Kensington. 
he relies entirely on universal credit for his income, which is paid out monthly and provided by the government for individuals who are out of work or living on a low income. I'm looking for part-time work. Because I take my two youngest into primary school, the earliest I could start if I have a job in that area is 9.30 and then I have to finish at 2.30 to collect them at 3.10. So that is the problem. In fact, I haven't come across any jobs yet that are just those tight hours. I don't have any family, so I have no one to help me. And the temporary work I'm applying for is mostly close to minimum wage, which is less than most of the childcare in this borough. For around a fifth of parents in the UK, childcare costs... I mean, look how old that guy is, yeah? Let's peel it back one second, my brother. Look how old this guy is, yeah? He's about... He better be about 60 years old. More than likely, he's only 50, but he looks like he's 60, yeah? So, the oldest daughter looked like she's about 10, yeah? Sub-secondary school, yeah? So, she's about 11 under, yeah? Just 11 years old. So that means that he started having children. If he is 50, yeah, I hope he's 60 the way he looks, but let's say he's 50, that means he started having children at age 39. Brother, what was you doing before that? You see, before you had children, you should have been grinding to put yourself in a good position, blood. You should be either have your own business, have a high paying job, or be sitting on a few properties and that. This guy has none of that, yeah? He deserves poverty. He's on a jolting, blood. How the fuck did you get to your big rascal age of 50, 60 years old and you're still looking for minimum wage jobs, blood? These people get on my fucking nerves and they, they think that the government's here supposed to be helping them. Now help your blood clot self, man. You should not be on no universal credit benefit at your big blood clot age. 2.30 to collect them at 3.10, so that is the problem. Poor In fact, I haven't come across any jobs yet that are just those tight hours. I don't have any family, so I have no one to help me. And the temporary work I'm applying for is mostly close to minimum wage, which is less than most of the childcare in this borough. For around a fifth of parents in the UK, childcare costs account for more than half of their household income. The UK is now one of the most expensive countries for childcare in the OECD. Oh, so I'm just reading that. So US, do, 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 Czech Republic, UK, Ireland, Switzerland, Austria, OK. So for those without a decent income, there is no chance to pay for childcare to be able to go and work. So the universal credit, because I have three children, I get tops up. So it's just over a thousand a month, which sounds quite a lot, but it soon goes because I have the gas and electricity. The gas, particularly when it's cold, is costing a lot. Now, what I do is I turn the gas on. And oh, trust me. <laughs> I found that out this winter, boy, because obviously they increased the prices and that. Boy, I'm sure I was doing about £50 a week on gas, you know. Easily. Easily doing £50 a week on gas, blood. No joke. Obviously, man can afford it, but still, like, yeah, I, I didn't like the fact that I had to pay so much money, but, you know, I can afford it, so. Enough. In December, with still gas and electricity point. prices through the roof, over 7 million were going without basics like food and heat, and 4.7 million were behind on their bills. Food is crazily expensive. For instance, the other day, we hadn't had ketchup for about a month. But the children said, come on, let's have ketchup again. It's nice with the chips. The cheapest ketchup I could get was four fifty. Oh shoot, my man's living near uh, Notting Hill, Holland Park. Yeah. Here are some results from a search. Oh, this shoot. is where Dad's house has really helped. I go to lunch there once a week, but also they have a food bank that makes all the difference. And Billy, he was a single dad himself. He set up this charity 15 years ago. He really helps me because he knows I've got three kids and so I haven't got any other help. You say it's a food bank. It's not just for single dads, it's for anyone in the community. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. So that's probably saving. I wonder what happened to the baby, Mum. You know, there are some strange cases, you know, where... Let's say in his instance, 
the baby mum, you would think that she died or something. No, she just up sticks and abandoned the children. Left the children with the man and just abandoned them, gone back to wherever. Those little girls looked like the mum could have been like Malaysian, Thai. You understand what I'm trying to say in it? Sometimes, yeah, women, they will just abandon their children. Very rare cases, very rare, rare cases. But I truly believe, remember I've made that video talking about when a man starts acting weak, the woman doesn't want the children like near the man or whatever, innit? I believe that something goes on in the, in the female psyche. In these rare cases, in these rare cases, when a man starts acting weak, she doesn't even want to be around the children because it's almost as if like the, the weak genes have now been passed on to the children. And I know this just sounds crazy to you, like, and if it's, trying to hear what I'm saying, it's almost like, ah, oh, well, you know what? Yeah, if he's a weak man, then these children are also going to be weak. So, you know, what? I don't want nothing to do with him or them because now they've got the weak gene. So then the woman just abandons the children, innit? Yeah, I'm just trying to make sense of why, why a mother would want to abandon her child, innit? And I believe if the child um, it comes from a weak father or whatever, or the weak, the father turns into a weak man, then I don't know, maybe the mother is fearful that the children will become weak and she just wants to abandon all of them. So you never know, that, that could be the case. Me, 600 pounds a month. So that enables me to stay solvent. But without that, well, our diet would suffer. We've got roughly between 60 and 70,000 families registered. So we've got between 40 and 50 families a day coming to Dad's house. The demand for the work that we do went through the roof, especially due to the cost of living. And it's absolutely heartbreaking when you see a mum or a dad who is absolutely struggling when it comes to not being able to cook for their children. Almost 90% of independent food banks say they saw an increase in demand compared to last year and over 80% reported supporting a significant number of people needing help for the first time. We can't plan. Um, it's impossible because we do not get the financial donations that we did get. And every day is really difficult to maintain that level. Sometimes we have had to go into our reserves to use that to buy food and to provide small grants. We struggle, and, and it's heartbreaking when you can't give to anyone, you know. So we'll go to the shops and we'll buy food, and we'll go to the bank and take money from the account so we can give that dad a little bit of cash that he can go and buy food, and he can put £50 in the electric. When we can, it's, I can't sleep at night. 1,254 for everything for a month. A dick of at least that 254 for travel. I've got direct debits, um, which is 200. So you're left with 200 a week, okay? So take off 50 pounds a week for gas and electricity. So if you buy no clothes, no toiletry, no medical stuff, no emergencies, no luxuries, no birthday presents, you're left with £150 for food. And if you don't have access to a food bank, that has got to last. As I said before, if it wasn't for the help I received from Dad's house, it would be extremely difficult. And their diet would be affected. And Peter had said that he Universal credit increased around 10% in spring to help with inflation. Though this provided some relief, the food insecurity of the past year is why UK's leading charities such as the Trussell Trust are petitioning for an essentials guarantee, a way to avoid the increased poverty and help with basic needs that benefits couldn't cover for so many months. They say the cost of living crisis has exposed the erosion. Blood, that flat looked big to blood club, eh? I'm not saying he said it was some small type cramped flat, but that flat looked big. ...of UK's benefits system. So... I think what I'm hearing when I'm speaking to people is that there is support out there, but it could be utilised a lot better. When you talk to food banks, people are really, really worried. I have asked people repeatedly, like, when do you think it's going to get better? And there's just this bleak silence, there's this kind of question mark. I'm incredibly grateful for and appreciative of what you do get help with in this country. What kind of helps keep you going? My children.
As you can see, we have dampness and mould right above the cupboards. It comes right down into my actual cupboards. Ah! And you still got... Oh, I thought there was food products in there. Fuck that, man. That's horrible. So hold on a minute. That's going through the backboard as well, you know. You know, like on your kitchen cupboards and that you have a backboard. That's going through the backboard, you know. So it's rotting away the wood, you know. So I can no longer store food in my cupboards. Mm. I had to throw all my food out. If I was locked up in prison, I would live more comfortably. But I bet you the house is dirty and nasty. We'll see. I mean, I know it is already. I ain't seen this, but I can just tell. Then here. I would have heating, I would have a warm bed, not damp walls, I'd be able to keep food in the house. Just in case you didn't hear, she said that she'll prefer to live in prison instead, I'll just peel it back. In my cupboards, I had to throw all my food out. If I was locked up in prison, I would live more comfortably than here. I would have heating, I would have a warm bed, not damp walls, I'd be able to keep food in the house, I'd be able to eat meals that were safe. It's just a horrible situation to be in. And I just feel I'm being ignored. I feel like... Look how dirty the door is. Like because they've put a roof over my head, that's it. They think that roof sorted her. Now she's got a roof, she can be fine. Just forget about her. This flat in Wester Hills feels more like a hellhole than a home to Tracy. Her bedroom walls are soaking. Her shower doesn't work. And nearly every surface is infested with mould. Tracy was told she'd only need to stay here for a few months. She's been here for more than four years. The day we moved in, the housing officer at that time came into the property and she told me to check the kitchen and she went with me to check and she said that previous tenants had complained about dampness and mould in the kitchen but that the landlord had been instructed to fix it and he had said that he had. So she went in and she opened the cupboard, she looked at it and it looked great, it, it looked fine. Essentially, all he's done is a makeover, he's painted over things, made it look like he'd fixed it because within six months, everything started to come back. And six months after that, the whole house was riddled with rising damp. And although I was getting checks every three months, by link, nobody would take note of what was going on. Tracy has an aggressive and rare form of Crohn's disease. She's immunocompromised and claims her asthma has been made worse by living here. The whole bath and floor fell two and a half inches with me inside it. No water comes out the taps at all. Them cheeseburgers, baby. Too much weight. Since the floors fell down on top of it. So I have no hot water at all in my bathroom. The floor has dropped quite a bit now. That is mad. I've never seen that. Listen, man working construction, been in the construction industry for 11 plus years. I've never seen the floor drop in my life. Not, obviously, not, I haven't witnessed it. But what I'm saying is, I've never been anywhere and know it's raw. Why is the floor so much lower? I've never seen that in my life, blood. That's a new one. Rats have free access into the house and mice have free access into the house. I have no running water from a sink in the bathroom. Oh. I have to physically go to friends and neighbours' houses to get bath and a shower, because I can't physically use my own bathroom. Yeah, every couple And I've days. had to throw away personal belongings that can't be replaced, like photographs of my kids when they were born. Their dad passed away when my youngest was 15 months old. Every photo that I have of him is gone. Every photo. Is I can't replace things like that. Is that because of the mould the the and the dump? Everything was ruined, so all the report cards, everything that you keep from your kids from their life, from school, now they're all gone. I don't have anything anymore, I had to throw it all away. And that broke my heart. Tracy's family live nearby, but they can't visit. Her granddaughter has breathing problems, so it isn't safe for her. She's only four, this is the years I should really be enjoying. I don't know how long I'm going to have with her, but I'm not going to see her at all. Especially when I know I'm on borrowed time anyway, because of my illness. It's horrible. All this is chipping away at Tracy's confidence and her mental health. It's embarrassing having people in the house because you don't want people to come in and smell that. Nobody wants to drink a cup of tea that's been prepared in a kitchen that's covered in black mould and that. Yeah, because that damp smell stinks. I've been in tenants' house, I'm like, yo, you got a damp problem, you know? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Horrible. Stinks. You're scared that you're going to make someone ill. 
This is a private sector leasing or PSL flat. It's an arrangement where the council pays a private landlord to rent their property. The scheme is managed by housing association Link and was created to cope with the demand for temporary housing. Apparently there's been no repairs in 16... Blood, I told you. I told you, fam, the house is dirty, created... blood. Look. Why is it every single property that has a bad damp problem, they're all dirty prop uh, properties? This, this is not a coincidence, blood. The people them are nasty. They're constituting to the fucking damp. Because when I got my recent property, the one where I made the video with the... I was doing up the kitchen here as well. That's my most recent property that I bought. Um, when I went into the flat, uh, mold spores, all the like the, the bacteria, I don't know, mold spores, whatever the fucking call it, all over the wall and that. I painted over it, gone. Yeah, it's the people them that were living there. They were living nasty. That's why there was all the mold spores on the fucking wall. To cope with the demand. Now I'm not saying that that probably ain't got a damp problem though, but. What I'm saying is, I find it very, very strange that all these properties that have a damp problem, they're all nasty and dirty. All of them. And for temporary housing. Apparently, there's been no repairs in 16 years done to this house. And obviously, the, system, right. the way it's set up means that the landlord of a PSL will be getting de a decent amount of rent every month. Yes. It's not even worth £50 a month. It's horrible to think you feel you've been completely forgotten. Because they think, oh, you're ill, you better die soon anyway, you know, just... And I put that to them, they think, you just wait for me to die, and then you don't have to house me. From single women to large families, this is a city-wide issue. The Syrian family arrived here as refugees in 2017. They now have settled status, but their living arrangements are anything but. Now a family of seven, they've been in this PSL flat for the past two years. So my very big sister, the one in um, two sleeps down here on the mat, and my other. All right, we got to stop being baby making factories until we can get our own suitable house and you know a place with adequate rooms and space. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a concentration camp. Two at the bottom, two at the top. What kind of fucking nonsense is this, blood? My sister sleeps here. She's the second oldest. And then me and my sister sleep up here. There's no room to put your legs. They say their health is being affected by the mouldy conditions. Three family members are now using inhalers for respiratory issues. Has it taken its toll on you as a family? Since I moved to this flat, I've had so many issues. I don't mind living in a small flat as long as the health is good in the system of the flat. Everything is healthy for us. But the I'm telling you, yeah, this damp thing is created by people not living in a hygienic way, not opening up windows, not keeping the place clean. My girl works in like a new build division, yeah? And she said one of the clients that she done a mortgage for it was a brand new property. Six months later, there's a fucking damp problem in the bathroom. It's because the tenant is nasty. It's because of the, sorry, the person who owns the property, they live dirty. I do not have a damp problem in my bathroom. There's no damp problem in my, my flat or the other flat or my mum's house. Yeah, it's always houses that people keep the yard nasty and dirty. They always have the damp problems, man. I'm telling you. Problem in this house. I there work in these people's houses day in, day out. I know what I'm talking about, blood. Don't question me. In the wall, so the water is coming to us as well. And the same in the kitchen. The parents say they discovered a rat infestation around the time their one year old son was born. Yeah, and all, but, the, all uh, the children didn't like using the kitchen because, like, the rat here, I didn't go to the kitchen. The family feels welcome in Edinburgh and the children are settled at school. But after a turbulent few years, they want to make the city their permanent home. Do you feel like the, living in this kind of temporary accommodation is holding you back from that? Yeah, I, I would like to uh, stay here and like uh, for life for my family. Since we moved here, we found very nice people. 
very welcoming. Even my children adapted to the community well. They accept that there's a long list of people in a similar situation, but the uncertainty is draining. For me, no problem. I'm waiting. But for my children and my wife, is I can't. Link told us the family of seven have rejected two offers of alternative properties. They also claim no rats have been found and that the mould is being treated. As for Tracy, Link says it's offered her alternative properties to try and meet her specific circumstances. They've now moved her into a different property while repair works get underway. When we have a crisis in Edinburgh with housing and there's thousands upon thousands of people suffering. I know what it's like to not have a home. You know, you don't have a base, you don't have any security, you don't have any warmth, and you're just aimlessly floating around all the time, and it's, and it's not a nice place to be. When John was in his 20s, his struggle with addiction began. For a long time, he felt that he had nowhere to turn. I was a ghost for about 20 years. I never addressed, I never doctors, I never phone number, I never mail and mail address. Uh, it wasn't even on the system. I wanted that by choice. It was my, my choice, just because uh, I was, I was, I was done. I was just, I was hurt and upset. Drugs, man, man, too much Ross Clark drugs, man. Fell through the cracks, basically, and nobody noticed. Single men are often placed in temporary accommodation, such as hostels, with strict curfews. What was that like? You get put in, in a room, then you're left, you're left in that room on your own. Uh, you can't speak to really anybody in the places. You tap anybody's door and you're asked to leave. And for me, sort of coming and being on the other side now, not once through the 15 to 20 years did anybody ever come in and say, how are you? How can I support you? And, and, and basically, so it's like you've forgotten about. And then, when you've forgotten about your life, well, well, what's the point? That must have been so isolating. It's, it's hard work. It's like you're already in a prison within yourself anyway, and then you get put in a box, a room. That's like being on the block. <laughs> if you don't know what block is, it's solitary confinement, basically. Isn't it? Like, I, I never went block. I did start a little drama in the exercise yard where I swung at some youth, but, um, yeah, I didn't go block for that still, fortunately. Uh, to defend for yourself, it's so, they're so depressing uh, and I'm not saying this for everybody because I know we're all on a different, a different journey and stuff but it was really, really, really hard uh, mentally for me to, uh, to get through that and I got to the point eventually where I just, want, I just stayed on the street because I wanted to be around people. John found community at a local church, and from there he got the help he needed to turn his life around. At his lowest point, he carried his belongings in bin bags. But two and a half years ago, he got the keys to his own flat. It's, just, it's, it's, it's my home. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. I have peace. Yeah, didn't have that for a, for a long time, and that's what a home gives you. Every night I know, I know I can put the key in that door, come in and just... Like everybody else, when you go home for doing this, you go, it's nice to be home, you can sit down, you can relax, you're not worrying about getting chucked out in the morning, get your push stuff in your bags, let's, let's go, you need to go again. There are more than 14,000 temporary accommodation households in Scotland. That's the highest figure on record, 9,130 of the people who... I would hate to be fucking homeless. Obviously, everyone watching this would hate to be homeless, but... The angle I'm coming out, coming from is me. I'm a man of structure. I'm a man of routine. So I would hate to just be sitting there thinking, "Boy, all right, just gotta got keep it moving today. Gonna try and find another family member's house that I'm gonna piss them off whilst I'm sofa surfing in that for the next two weeks." Fuck that bullshit. There's people right now sofa surfing. Literally, they're hitching a little ride on someone's sofa for two weeks. Then they have to get up and find somewhere else. And that, bruv, fuck that, blah. Man. I'm a man of structure and routine, blood. I've not got time to be walking around with bin liners and that and 
oh, auntie, oh, uncle, oh, grandma, can I stay for two weeks and that? Yo, cuz, man, we, we go way back and that. Yeah, let me just cotch on yourself for two weeks, man, then I'll find something. The whole time you're there, they're going to be waiting for your departure. No. Live under these conditions. Our children. How frustrating is that? For and a man them that moving with a girl, if you ain't got no mum's house to go back to or family's house to go back to for whatever reason, like, but that could be you, fam. Yeah? You could be the guy that would be sold for surfing, blood. If you don't, if you can't afford to rent a room or because you've got a bad credit score and a couple of people are checking credit scores and that just to rent a room and shit like that. I don't. I, I don't need to check a credit score. I let people know from the jump. If you fail to pay the rent, I'll serve you a notice and you have to leave. I ain't had nobody. Everybody. Everybody who passed through the JY's house. Yeah, one of JY's property. I played them blood clot rent pun time, yeah? For you to see that things haven't moved on, they haven't changed. It's just disheartening. That's why I'm so passionate about it, because I remember it. And I remember going through that system, constant rejection, constant rejection, have nothing for you, have nothing for you. You beat down, beat down. You know, I treat people about dignity and about respect, rather than knocking them back all the time. You go. There you go. John is now using his experience to help others, working at homeless charity Cyrenians. I just love working with people and, and installing, hoping people when, when, when they have none. Stray dog on the street gets picked up, taken to the vet, it gets honed, it gets out, it gets walked. What's, what's wrong with a human being? How does a human being not get their needs met? They get forgotten about. There is hope, there's hope for everybody. We need, we, need, we need to support these people when they get put into accommodation. We need to be there for them. We need to find out what they need, what needs need met. I hope this message reaches the right people, that we see change in ourselves. Because we do this every day, to see change in people and support people in their lives, and we need help to do that. Next video, next video. Let's go. No one in Britain who is willing to work will ever again suffer absolute want. The post-war welfare system made preventing destitution the responsibility of the state. And only a scheme like this can afford you such high benefits. Come on now, it's worth it, isn't it? Every penny of it. Now, a new welfare revolution is underway, shifting greater responsibility back to the individual and changing lives in the process. People are killing themselves over this, you know. I don't know where to go from here, I'm lost. Why is this going on? In this Line 18 special, we speak to those claiming universal credit, the professionals grappling with the system, and the new data that reveals its impact on debt. Well, I don't know exactly what universal credit is, but I believe it's something like, if you fall below a certain amount, then the government tops up your wages. So imagine, yeah, like, the rock bottom amount you should be on, the minimum you should be on is £12,000 a year. Well, if you claim universal credit because you're only on £8,000, they might give you an extra four. I'm just speculating. I've never had to, obviously, I've been on benefits as well, yeah. The great Jay Wise has been on benefits. Oh, oh, trust me. I was a, you know, a user of the job centre at Edmonton, yeah. So I ain't going to try and pretend I was, no, I, I was on benefits before. Yeah, I used to claim job seekers allowance. I used to, you get me. Oh, yeah, have you done much job searches this, this week? Oh, yeah, uh, 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 of course I've done lots of job searches. That we talking about? I've been handing out my CV to all the offices in Westminster. What are you talking about? I dare you ask me that. Oh, I was doing my job searches, all right. You get me. Yeah, I, I, was, I was collecting my little gyro and that. Not me, but other people. But not me, but other people. They used to wait until their money dropped in their account. Not me, but other people. They would wait until their money dropped in their account and go and buy a local queue to start up their local drug line and that. Uh, I know a couple of people that have done that still. Very bad. Evictions and hunger. Hi, my name's Joe Cahill. I'm calling from the Specialist Welfare Advice Team at New Charter. Did you, hey, did you receive our letter regarding universal credit? No. One morning in March, 
things changed in this area of Greater Manchester. The universal credit rollout arrived in Tameside. The new Charter Housing Association knows what that means. Of their tenants already on the new system, 85% are in rent arrears. With around 5,000 more of their Thames... How could 85% of people be in rent arrears? Fucking hell. That's bad. Side tenants now about to be moved on to it. They need to get prepared. We've identified who is going to be affected and we'll go through a needs assessment and we'll then identify anything like if they've got debt, if they've got um, no internet, they've got no passports, things like that. I'll go this way. By design, all new claimants will face a minimum of five weeks without payment, but that could potentially be much longer if they have problems completing the online application process. And so rent arrears can build up, and with that comes the risk of eviction. Denise McIntyre fears that is exactly what is going to happen to her. She's a grandmother and with serious respiratory problems is unable to work. But when she's moved on to the new system, she too will face at least a month before her claim is paid. I worry that I'm going to end up on the street with nothing. I really do. While advance loans are available, the fact she already has accumulated debts means she doesn't want to take on more. It's just upsetting, you know what I mean? I did work. God damn, you did not work hard enough. This is what I'm saying, yeah? I've said this in a few of my videos before. These people that are struggling, I don't know how old she is, probably, if not pensioner, gonna be, seem to be a pensioner and that. When things were good, you know, maybe a conversation came up about university and that. And a lot of these people, especially from the working class community, they love to dismiss university and that. Oh, why do I need to go to university to get a degree and that? I've been working at this hardware store for 20 years. I've got a roof over my head. I've got food in my fridge. I can go on holiday once every three years and that. I'm happy. Why, why do I need to get a high paying job for? I'm comfortable and that. I don't want to do all those 60, 70 hours a week. I don't want to go to university and that. Bloody, if you've done that, if you've done those 60, 70 hour weeks, if you went to university and that, if you bought some properties, you would not be in the position that you're in right now. It's ridiculous, bro. This is why I make these cost of living videos. If you're an average person right now and you're not doing the most and you're just coasting along through life, this is going to be your future, my friend. Yeah? My brother, my sister, whoever, man, woman, or whatever you identify as, if you identify as a tomato or a cat, I don't know nowadays. This is going to be your future if you don't get your act together. Because these same people and that, they were just coasting along through life thinking, yeah, everything's cool and that. Nah, fam, it's not. It's not. You've got to think about where you want to be, how you want to be living when you, when you retire, when you're 65 or 70 years old by the time it's um, retirement age for you. But the government don't care. They the... don't listen to people. They don't. And the offer from New Charter to assist with food parcels is more upsetting than reassuring. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll finish it before I get to the point where I've got to go and ask them for the food. You know, the, there are people who are, you, you know, <laughs> you're speaking to Joe today. Yeah. Yeah. But I couldn't go to Joe and say, look, Joe, I've got no food. I need help food. I couldn't do that. I couldn't loan myself to do that. But is that the kind of thing you're hearing a lot of? They are so proud and they, they don't want to ring up and ask for help. It's always the brokest people that have got the most pride. <laughs> it's so funny. Blood, you can't be proud or have pride when you're dirt poor. They've nev they never have done. Um, and obviously when we're now knocking on the door, and we're advising that we can help and they're seeing this face-to-face -face contact, they're opening up to us. Universal Credit merges a number of separate benefits into one. Like a wage, it's calculated on how much you've worked and paid monthly in arrears, not up front. And to encourage people to manage their own finances, housing benefit is paid direct to them. But in practice, that's causing serious problems. In a survey of housing associations, the National Housing Federation found that across the country, 73% of tenants on universal credit were in significant rent arrears, compared to 29% in areas still using the previous benefit system. 
also provided to Sky News were interim findings from a survey conducted by the Residential Landlords Association. You're damn right. Listen, I am not taking in no one who is not working. So, in regards to being a landlord, yeah? I'm not allowing no one to live in my house who is on any sort of benefit. No. I want people who are fucking working and 100% of their money comes from work. Not, oh, I've got a little universal credit. Oh, a little child benefit. Oh, a little um, fucking job seekers. Are like, nah, 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 nah. I don't give a fuck. Like, I, I don't want no one who's on benefits living in my house. Even still, like, I remember there was one time there was one girl. Um... She must have phoned me up asking about a room and she was saying, oh, would you accept a guarantor? I told her, no. No, I don't want no guarantor. Yeah, because you're basically what you're telling me is there is, a, there is... The fact that this girl's phoned me up and told me, would you accept a guarantor means you know at some point you're not going to be able to make payments for, for, um, for, for rent. You're not going to be able to make the rent payment. The fuck? You think I'm only taking on someone like that? How the hell are you anticipating that you're not going to be able to pay me rent? Because I never asked or said nothing about a guarantor. So, ah, oh man, fuck off, man. I don't want no one. I even had one little black girl uh, wanting to stay in my house. This is when I first bought the property and that. And um, I told the parents, yeah, obviously, usually, let's say, for example, the room is 450 or 350. It's usually 350 uh, and then another 350. So you have to give me 700 pounds and I give you the key and that. So it's one month's rent and the same value as a deposit. I told them, nah, I want two months rent up front. Or you call it two months rent deposit, it doesn't matter, innit? But I want, yeah, I want two months rent. So I want two months deposit up front. So 350 plus 350 plus an extra 350 before I move your daughter in. Because the parents were planning on paying for her, innit? Nah, I don't really feel comfortable. I don't want no one living in my house and they're not paying rent out of their own pocket. So I said, nah. But anyway, they didn't end up taking, she didn't end up taking a room anyway. They found 62% of private landlords are now unwilling to rent to universal credit claimants. And amongst those landlords that are renting to universal credit claimants, almost a third said they'd evicted a tenant on the new benefit in the last 12 months. In more than three quarters of those cases, this was as a result of rent arrears. Joe Beck manages 350 rental properties across Greater Manchester and sees these issues daily. All of a sudden, a large amount of money is going into their account and they're expected to make sure that the rent's paid every, ta every month on time. And common sense tells you that should happen, no problems, but no, it doesn't. <laughs> that goes on drink, drugs and whatever foolishness you can think of. And dealing with the fallout of benefit changes has changed his job. I'm not a letting agent. I might, might say that on my business card, but no, we're a social worker. We're citizen advice bureau for, you know, tenants like our mother landlords. We're a creche sometimes for when they bring the kids here. So no, 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 we're more than just letting agents. And you have to be, you have to, you have to do that. If you don't adapt, if you don't, if you just- Trust me, I know the feeling. I'm not just an electrician or electrical tester at my job. I'm a removal man. I'm a fucking pet detective. I'm a fucking childminder. I'm a fucking psychiatrist. Blood, all these jobs. Yeah, I'm an agony aunt or agony uncle, whatever you want to fucking call it. Yeah, all these different job roles. Yeah, working in these people's houses. Man, I had girls tell me how they've been violated and they kept the baby and shit. Madness. Just black and white with it and say, you've not paid your rent, you're evicted, then you, you might as well just shut the shutters and close the shop. The real revolutionary impact of universal credit isn't its intention to simplify the system or ensure that work always pays more than benefits. The revolution is in the way it redefines the very purpose of welfare to being to tackle worklessness, treating it as a behavioural problem, an attitude that the system is designed to change. The government say the system is succeeding in its aims, with people moving into work more quickly and staying in work for longer. But Charlotte Hughes isn't persuaded. For four years, she's held a weekly demo outside Ashton Job Centre, giving out food and advice to people she believes are being utterly failed by the state. As long as the universal credit exists, we will still have to be here to pick up the pieces, all right? We've seen some horrible things. Um, people are literally starving. People we used to see in the early days committing suicide, you know, uh, police officers telling us that you won't see this person anymore because they, they committed suicide last week. 
I still cry when I know about this gentleman that I used to know every week that I used to speak to, you know. And why is this going on? While we were filming, a young man approached who'd been sleeping rough. I'm so sorry. Have you got a tent or anything? Yeah. How old are you, by the skin? 19. So sorry. So, so sorry. Come in and get warm. Come on. Come put your stuff down and have a warm. Do you want some warm food? I bet you've not ate for a long time, have you? Not really. So, we've got 19 year old ch young men and young women are homeless and they, fall, they can't get housing because there's no. They can't get housing because they've got to have a shared room thing. And you can't get a shared room. How can you come up with a deposit for that? And we don't have families. I don't have a family. This gentleman doesn't have a family. Oh, I've not got an address. I've not got a bag. Well, got time for a cigarette, oh yeah? Got money for a cigarette, oh yeah? I've not even got ID. <sighs> you see, they expect people to have all those things. How can you get a bank account without ID? You know? How can they do? How can he do that? It's just impossible, isn't it? That people like this lovely young man are falling through the cracks of the system. Right, don't tent, don't camp out in the middle of town, please. No, I know. You're going to be so vulnerable. Ryan Abrahams is 19. Not only has he been unable to find homelessness support, but when it comes to benefits, his circumstances mean he cannot even access the system, let alone make a claim. Everywhere I go. They tell me that I've been homeless for this long and I've managed to keep myself alive this long. So I mean, so say what? So I can last, so I can last a few more months on the streets. Oh fuck and off! They, don't, they just don't get back to you after that. That is some. Those people are evil, boy. I can you tell a you man. You, you've lasted this long, so you can go another few months out on the street. Motherfucker, I might die of hypothermia, man. The fuck, blood? I've got no phone. I've got no access to internet. I can't search jobs online. I can't get my CV printed out because I've got not got the money to do so. I've not got any of the... I mean, it might cost you £1 to use the computer at the internet cafe and 10p or 20p, depending on how many pages your CV. In his case... Probably the CV is probably going to be this long, one paragraph, and that. Hi, my name is Ryan. Uh, and cost you one pound uh, seventy to to print out your CV. I don't hear the damn excuses, man. Things that you needed for a job, I just I don't know where to go from here. I'm lost. In nearby Oldham, full universal credit has been in place for more than a year. And the issues people here are facing suggest there are more than just teething problems. A traumatic experience in her past has left Joanne unable to work. Now the red eviction notices are piling up. She's already been transferred off her previous benefits, but is yet to successfully set up a new claim, meaning rent hasn't been sent to her landlord in months. If she's made homeless, she could lose the custody of her son. My life has been turned upside down. I feel... I feel desperate. I feel it's horrible. And no one's listening. What kind of money are you living off a week at the moment? Nothing at the minute. Not 20 quid for food, not... No, nothing, I'm getting nothing, all my money's been stopped. Right, there's no small about fire, why the fuck's your money being stopped? Because I'm sure they didn't mention it, but we'll see. So, and the only reason why I've got food at the minute is because my mum... The people are killing themselves over this, you know. Do you know that? There's, I know a few deaths of people because they're in a raise with the housing, they're getting evicted, they're killing themselves. All universal credit. But it's not just people who can't work that are struggling. Even those in work are finding it hard to make ends meet. They're making it so difficult for single mums. <laughs> Tanya is employed as a carer. To make universal credit meet her needs and those of her four daughters, she's been told to work more hours. But that means additional childcare costs that she can't afford. So when the government says it's making sure that oh, work yeah. pays more than benefits? No, it's not. No, not at all. Nothing. My, my money's worse working than before. I feel like not working. 
that's how, it, that's how it is. I got more not working. Another key indicator of the impact of universal credit has been food bank use. New figures from the Trussell Trust show that, on average, food bank usage in areas where universal credit has been rolled out went up 52% in the first 12 months of the new system, four times higher than in areas where it's yet to be introduced. And it's here in the northwest that food bank demand is highest, with nearly 200,000 parcels given out last year across the region. In the Oldham Food Bank, they've seen a major increase in demand, with people in work but on universal credit now regularly among those relying on handouts to survive. This is the fifth time that Frank's been referred to the food bank. Just over a year ago, an injury prevented him from working. Now, despite being on universal credit, he cannot afford to eat. It feels as though um, I've been persecuted. Um, I've worked for 45 years, I've play, I paid my taxes for 45 years, my insurance for 45 years, and now when we further down the line, when I need assistance, they can only offer me limited assistance, and I don't think that's right. And without the food bank? With, without the food bank, I wouldn't be here, I'd be dead, I'd be dead, dead of starvation. The sheer volume of complaints about the system has prompted some to urge the government to pause the universal credit rollout, but that has not happened. As a result of pressures, a number of changes have been made to universal credit. The claimant hotline no longer has any charges. 18 to 21 year olds are no longer exempt from the housing allowance. In some circumstances, landlords can have rent paid direct to them. And crucially, the minimum wait period between a claim and that first benefit payment coming through is being reduced from six weeks to five. The government say this shows they are listening. Critics say it simply shows the system isn't fit for purpose. In the end, the question of whether welfare is working depends on how you define its purpose. The government say that work is the best form of welfare, and with record levels of employment, they suggest it must be succeeding in its aims. But if the purpose of welfare is to ensure everyone, both in and out of work, is prevented from going hungry or losing the roof from over their heads, evidence is stacking up that something is going seriously wrong. All right, thanks for making it to the end. I need to go sleep. I'm tired. Stay where it's done now.